Hi, it's Leanne Jago back again for Two Sisters Art. So I'm going to use the July sampler box again. So I've actually used some of the Atelier paints. Now I love these, so I have a variety as you can see there. So what I'm going to do is use those and then I've also got some chipboard and stencils from Kinder Creations, which is an awesome Aussie company. So I'm going to use those as well. So I've just started out on a canvas board here and I've got some of the um, the satin heavy gel medium that we got in the box. Um, it is really quite thick so I'm just doing some layering up of some got some tissue paper that I'd used for a gel print earlier and then some book print and I'm just going to adhere that down. Um, it's just about creating some texture. Um, a lot of this that I do at the start here is with all mixed media pieces get covered up in the end. But as I said, you know, it's just for texture and you can actually see the texture of it at the end. So I really, really like that. Um, the project sort of goes through a few stages where I think, oh, I shouldn't have done that and then kind of fix it. And then I don't mind actually how it comes out in the end. So it's pretty cool. So I'm just going to dry that a little bit, as you saw, and then I'm just going to get out. Um, I have the Atelier in the um, heavy gel, me heavy, sorry, heavy gesso primer and it's a so I use it a fair bit I use it instead of my white paint that's what a lot of people do with their primers unless I run a really white white um, and it's pretty thick so I actually just scraped a couple of that on and then just with a squeegee just sort of spread it around again it's just catching so and then I've got these two chipboard pieces here from um, Kinder Creations so I've got the honeycomb there and the bee um, so I'm just going to work through this in a, in a process type thing because I want to cover it in white embossing powder so I will and yeah as you can tell I don't don't stick to the rules so I just got some of the gesso did a little section and then I sprinkled some of the embossing powder on it now I'm not being too fussy over where or how much goes on there because I actually want some of the raw chipboard so it can soak up some of the the wash of um, paint that I put on over it later on so I'm not being overly careful and I do exactly the same thing here with the bee so you can see how careful I'm not being and then I'll just heat set the embossing powder I won't make you watch the whole video because that just takes too long. It's just frightening for me. Now I'm not sure what happens with this next bit because when I'm filming my camera that I use at the moment only films in 19 minute segments so it's a bit of a pain in the butt. But anyway, um, and it's sort of on a lean or something. Something's happening. So I've just got some of the, and I'm just using the Aralomide Yellow Deep and I've just watered it down and just putting it over the top of that chipboard that I've heat embossed the white on there um, and then just sort of drop drying it off I suppose you could say and then if you actually go through with the heat gun again some of the embossing powder comes back up again this that sort of technique with the embossing powder and like letting a stain I suppose happen works really really well with the distress oxides as well so I have done that before so if you want something different you know you can try that so now I've just got out and if this is a blue black indigo in the um, atelier paints now I love this color I really really love it I use it a fair bit you probably see it again when I do the gel print so again same thing just washed it sprayed spritz it with some water this time because I didn't want it as dark and then heated it again <clears throat> sorry so now I'm just going to get out my gel print plate now I have a pretty massive one um, I don't use it as much as what I should so I really should use it all. Um, now because I've got the texture on it, I'm not going to get a perfect print, if that makes sense, as you would as if you used your paper. But that's what I wanted. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, so looks like I've got some turquoise there. Um, I'm trying to see what other colours I just used. One of the yellows as well. It must be the yellow ochre. Yeah, and then I've always got some tissue paper just laying around so sort of just drying it up with that so again with that deep yellow and then some yellow oak over the top 
and then you're just taking up some of it, um, the paint with that stencil. Again, you can't see it a lot right now, but you can see it later on, and I do go back over it later as well. Because I wasn't really happy with how the gel print... I, I kind of was, and then I wasn't happy with it. Does that make sense? <laughs> Brooke the Nord. But anyway. <laughs> um, and then I'm just putting down this white, and I will use some of this white because it's got some of the yellow and blue through it. It was more just to add a little bit more texture, I suppose. Now, this big piece of paper, this big piece of tissue that I've been cleaning with, um, this gel print off it absolutely looks amazing so I can't wait to use that so that you know that's a bonus piece of doing this so this time I've got some of the blue black again and then a quidacridone red violet I love that color as well so there's a few like there's some amazing colors in this in this range and it's fantastic paint like it really really is it's amazing um, yeah so now I'm just going to go back in with some more gesso and just scrape through it a bit more um, more to pick up not necessarily run over the top but to fill the holes if that makes sense from where I've got that texture of the paper and that underneath um, to try and make it more of an even level playing field so then I'll just dry it off a little bit and then I'll come back and do some more so this time what I'm actually going to do is pull out some distress oxides and use them so first of all I i done this the other day on some paper and it worked, worked really well but and I spritzed it like squished down the um, pads on the on the piece of paper and then spritzed it and then did it that way but then I just decided just to do it straight onto the plate which works really well as well and I just used my brayer just to roll it so it gives some nice texture nice finish that you get from your um, distress oxide so I've got scattered straw broken china mustard seed and old paper was what I just used there so again I'm just cleaning my plate here I probably could have skipped it but you know it is what it is as you can see how big that sheet of paper is like because I think it's a 12 by 16 gel plate that I've got and yes yeah, so I'm looking forward to using that and yes I do clean the gel plate off a little bit better later on I just you know you want used to have to go through that Task. Okay, so it's kind of looking messy and grungy, which is the background that I want. And then I'm thinking it's too light, um, and it's not as as textural as I'd like it. Because I really, I had no idea. I was just using the canvas board, some of the paints, and those chippy pieces. I had no idea where or vision in my head for this project. So this is the way I create. So I thought, why not? share the way I do create with you guys instead of just trying to do a project and then replicate it because I just don't work like that it just doesn't work properly so I've just got some masking tape and I'm stripping it like ripping it off into strips um, all uneven strips layering some thicker than other places and then again same with the um, gesso again just applying some more and then that's just some deco art media um, cracker paste over the top as well and then I get it's a deco art media antiquing cream it's called um, I did this technique lots and lots and lots and lots because the cracks in the cracker paste come through really well and then because I've applied the heavy gesso it cracks up as well and then the masking tape so I've just created a whole bundle of texture okay so now I've got out a it's a yuan brilliant so it's kind of um I don't know a, apricot color I guess and then just your ochre again just going through that same stencil so it's a cell stencil from um, Kinder Creations no I'm not lining it up properly yes some of the cells overlap some of the lines overlap but you know whatever happens so I've just got a makeup sponge going through and just wherever it happens to be that's where it's going as you can see I'm still don't know what I'm doing with the composition now I think I've set it on this way which is what I end up doing so it's still a bit flat so I'm getting out another stencil I can't remember who makes this one I am so sorry I think it could be no idea I think it might be a delusions one I don't know but yeah I've just got laying through the burnt sienna and then just some of the other colors that I've already used through there so just really randomly um, all these letters and numbers overlap 
I'm just trying to leave that, that blank texture part, black texture part in the middle um, as a sort of grounding for the piece. So then I just get out a, well it's supposed to be white thread and black thread but the, I don't know, got water spilled on it or something. So it's really an off-white thread now but it's okay. So just putting some of that down and then I'll just adhere the tippy. So I'm just using some 450 glue, just any heavy body, even that heavy body um, gel medium would work perfectly for that as well. Okay, so laying on my chippy pieces. Then I'm thinking it needs more texture, so I get out that stamp, the, like that wire, chicken wire, honeycomby effect stamp as well that we've got in the June sampler kit. And just with some um, stays on ink, randomly placing that around. And then I get out some distress oxide and then use the other part of that stamp and it just sort of went blobby. Probably because of the way I was using it. But anyway, still had a little, little bit more texture. And then I don't think the, the B is just not looking right for me. So I just get out some of the scatter straw, water it down and then just sort of sprinkle it over that B um, and then heat gun it in and wipe up any extra. So it just gives a, instead of being a stark white B, I suppose, of the texture paste, of the um, embossing powder, it sort of just changes it a little bit. So it's just again with just some crackle. Using my fingers just to put a bit more white. And, and we're pretty much done. I think I just do a little bit more stamping over those tech, over those crackle paste areas and then I just find a quote. Um, I was going to go back and edge it with my Stabilo pencil that I usually do, but then I, I have just left it and um, it's growing on me. It's, it's something different for me, which I think is a good thing. Um, we sit in our comfort zone too long, we sort of become a bit stale in our art. So yeah, so again, so this is the June sampler kit from Two Sisters Art. It's been so much fun. Thank you again for all the girls for inviting me to um, play along. And I will be back again next month, which is now this month. So there you go, some close up pieces. You can see the cracks and everything like that. So thank you so much for watching. Um, don't forget to um, like and um, comment and subscribe to the Two Sisters channel. And we'll see you later. Thank you.